Hi, welcome to this hands-on session on Snowflake. I am Aliza Tanvir and in this video we will learn what are micropartitions, how you can view the micropartitions of a table, how you can view the clustering keys and how you can assign different clustering key to each of your table. I will use this schema to perform further operations. There are two ways of viewing the clustering information in Snowflake. First is to use the use of built-in system function. So any function that has a system dollar sign is a built-in function. And clustering underscore information is going to give us clustering information about the table line item. So the clustering information tells me that this table has been clustered by using the column L underscore ship date. The next parameter tells me that this table has 10,336 micropartitions. The parameter total constant micropartition count is the number of micropartitions that will not have a significant impact as a result of reclustering. Reclustering, as the name suggests, is the process of clustering your table when the data arrives. So, for example, you have a table and you have 5 micropartitions inside the table. New batches of data are arriving and being ingested into this table. Now, what happens is that Snowflake will try to identify which chunk of this new batch of data goes into which micropartition. As a result of this, some of the micropartitions will need to be reclustered, but there will be some micropartitions which will remain untouched. So, the constant micropartitions will remain as it is. We can also view the table using the wildcard operator, so I am going to write show tables like line. So it is going to show me all the tables that has line in its name and it is going to give me information about line item. Next I will create a new warehouse of the size extra large because I am going to need this new warehouse for the particular role in order to display clustering. Then we will use this warehouse. Then we are going to display the table line item and we are going to limit the records to 200,000 and then we will move to view the query history. Click on query profile and then from there we will have a look at the query statistics. Here you can see that this query has scanned a total of 13 partitions and the total partitions were 10,336. The bytes scanned are 8.92 GB. In order to avoid the query from fetching data from the cache, I am going to set use cache result flag to false in order to avoid getting results from the cache. Now once again we will view the line item table but this time we are going to view only those rows where the L underscore ship date is 1-12-1998. I will limit the number of rows to 10,000 and then I will view the query profile for this particular query. Here you will see that the number of scanned partition is 1, total number of partition is 10336 and the byte scanned are 11.06 MB and the cache result is 100%. Now I will modify this query a little bit and instead of one date I am going to define it two dates to get the records from the line item table. Upon viewing the query profile, you will see that again the scan partition is 1, total number of partition is same but this time the number of bytes scanned is 43.23 MB. Now I am going to view the clustering information of another table called part sub table and it has a clustering key of ps underscore sub key. Upon running, you will see the clustering information including the total partition count, total constant partition count, average overlay, etc. Now I am going to run another query in which I will select the total number of records and the count of distinct supply keys from the table parts up. And then upon running, I will get the unique supply keys for the table. Here you can see that there are a total of 800 million records out of which 10 million supply keys are unique. Now I will switch the schema to e-commerce underscore live. Inside the schema e-commerce underscore live, I will create a new table called customers and I am going to copy the data in it from the snowflake sample data tables customer. Similarly, I will create 5 new tables inside the schema called nation part parts up region and supplier and i am going to copy the data from the sample data database respective tables 
upon running all the tables will be created but once you hover over all the created tables you will see that the clustering key has not been copied into them so now i will explicitly add clustering key into each table i will copy the above commands and then i'm going to add clustering key into each of these table by using the command cluster by and defining the na column name by looking at the table inside the snowflake sample data database now you can see that for the tables for which defined the cluster key have been recreated with the cluster key in it and this is how you can view the micro partitions in your table and create different type of clustering keys for each table this is all for this video thank you